Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with carnitas. That's right, carnitas translates to little meats, which I find more than a little disappointing in that it's such an underwhelming name for such an overwhelmingly delicious recipe. But anyway, it does sound great in Spanish. And despite the name, there's nothing small about this recipe. Big flavor, amazing texture, and as you'll see, produces a taco that is nothing short of fantastic. So let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we need to cut up some pork. And for that, we're gonna use something called pork shoulder, also known as pork butt. And all we're gonna do is take a knife and cut this up into large chunks. And where you see natural separation of the muscles, you can just trim that apart. And by the way, don't discard any fat. We'll get to that in a minute. So like I said, we're gonna take that meat and cut it into nice large pieces. I'm gonna say about two inches, but I'm not gonna measure. Some of these might be two and a quarter, some might be one and seven eighths, how do I know? The real key here is pick a size and stick with it. As long as your chunks are relatively the same size, they should cook uniformly, which is what we're going for here. And once our meat's been chunked up, we're gonna go ahead and take any of the fat and just kind of cut that into small pieces. See, traditionally carnitas is cooked in its own fat, like totally immersed in fat. We're not gonna be able to do that here. We're doing a modified version for home use, but we do want as much fat as possible. So I do want you to cut that fat up into small pieces like that. And then what we'll do is we'll transfer that all into a bowl and season it up. And of course, with something like this, there's literally thousands of different ways you could season it. So this is just my particular take on it, but I think a lot of these are fairly typical. So we'll start with some kosher salt. We're also gonna want some freshly ground black pepper. After that, we're gonna do some cinnamon. I'm also gonna do some ground cumin. And as a little bit of a surprise secret ingredient, some Chinese five spice. Oh yeah, you heard me. And if you're not sure what that is, I'll talk about that on the blog. I'm also gonna to toss in a couple bay leaves that I broke in half just for better flavor distribution. I'm also gonna toss in a handful of peeled whole garlic cloves. And then we're gonna introduce some orange in two different ways. We're gonna to wanna to do some orange peel. And I literally mean the peel, All right? You don't want too much of that white part. So just take a potato peeler and just peel off some nice big pieces like that. And then once we have the peel of the orange in there, just go ahead and cut that in half and squeeze in the juice. And that's gonna add a little bit of moisture and sweetness. I know, thank you, Chef Obvious. And then after the orange, last but not least, some olive oil. And you don't need to be using your fancy, expensive extra virgin here. Just regular olive oil is perfect, the lighter the better. And we will take a spoon and we will mix that thoroughly. So people like to add different chili powders at this point, some different dried herbs, thyme, oregano. But for me, this is the mixture I prefer. But you decide, you are the jefe of your carnitas. So we'll mix that up thoroughly. And at that point, we will transfer it into some kind of heavy duty nine by 12 or 13 baking dish or roasting pan. And once that's transferred in, go ahead and take a spoon or a spatula and just make sure everything's kind of evenly distributed. Okay, it's not that big of a deal, but you don't want like all your bay leaves in one spot or all your garlic in one spot. Just kind of mix it up. And then what we'll do is we'll transfer this onto a sheet pan and then wrap it very, very tightly in heavy duty foil. And you know I love my heavy duty foil. If you don't have that, you'll have to use two or three pieces of regular foil, which will work, but just make sure it's really tight. So what we'll do once that pan's ready is we'll place that in the middle of a 275 degree oven for about three and a half hours or until that meat is absolutely fork tender. So let me go ahead and pull mine out and take a look. And of course the exact time will depend on how big your chunks were. But if you do them about the same size I did, three and a half hours should be about right. But you'll know because a fork will slide into that meat with like zero effort. So that is absolutely perfect. Meat tender, garlic cloves and anything else in there tender. And we're ready for final assembly. So next up we wanna separate everything. We wanna transfer the meat into some kind of colander over a bowl. And once that meat's been removed, we can go ahead and get rid of the garlic cloves and orange peels and bay leaves. And of course, if I was a great food stylist, I would have saved those orange peels for the final shot. But you know what, I didn't think of that. That's okay, I'm over it already. And then we'll go ahead and pour that braising liquid into the colander also, which of course is gonna leave us with two things, a strainer full of amazing meat, and of course the juices and fat underneath, which we're gonna use in a second, so don't throw that away. And at that point, we're gonna transfer our meat back into our pan for the last and maybe most important step, the crisping. Also sometimes referred to around here as the crispification. So all we need to do is dump that drained pork back into the pan. We will skim off a little bit of that reserve fat from our bowl of juice and drizzle that over the top. All right, try to get a little on every piece. And then all we need to do is put this under a broiler set on high, about five or six inches under the heat until it's crispy. And if you want, which you do, after four or five minutes, pull it out, take a look at it, and maybe drizzle over a little more fat, which is what I'm doing here. And we'll push that back under the heat for another few minutes until it looks like this. That surface should crisp up beautifully. And not only should it look amazing, it should really sound amazing. 
That surface is going to get all crispy and crunchy. Yet underneath, you're still going to have the softest, most succulent, most melt-in-your-mouth pork you've ever tasted. And while it will be very tempting to just eat it right out of the pan like that, I decided to pile it up in something a little prettier for presentation. And then another optional step, which you really should do, you can drizzle over some of that braising liquid. Okay, some people even like to reduce it down and pour it over. Totally fine. Great idea. But either way, it's going to be magnificent. And at that point, our carnitas are officially done and ready to eat. But before I build a taco, I gotta eat one more piece just like this. And don't get me wrong, the flavor's amazing. But above and beyond the taste, like I said, the magic is really in the texture. It's that combination of crispy surface and moist, buttery, melt-in-your-mouth pork that just can't be beat. And then let's finish up in style by making one carnitas taco. You're gonna, of course, want a nice warm corn tortilla. We'll top that with a few chunks of our pork. Just kind of smash them apart a little bit. A lot of people like to chop this. I do not. I like the bigger pieces. And then all you're really gonna wanna enjoy with this is a little bit of salsa. Of course, we're using our fire roasted cherry tomato salsa. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit of diced white onion, just a touch. We'll also do a little bit of freshly chopped cilantro and maybe a little fresh lime to garnish. If you want a little extra acidity to cut the fat in that pork. But really that's it, restraint is key here. Of course, having said that, I hate when people tell people how they should eat things. So you put what you want in here. And that is just an unbelievably amazing bite of food. And I have no way of knowing if there's actually tacos in heaven. I mean, for that matter, I don't even know if there's heaven in heaven. But if there is, and if they do, this has to be the taco they serve, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.